Hey everybody, my name is Andrew. And my name is Morag. And you're listening to Culips. Hey Morag. Hey Andrew, how's it going? I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm doing all right. All right, yeah. Morag, I want to jump right into this episode because we got a lot of awesome content to share with all our listeners today. And today we're going to do a catch word episode. For those of you that don't know, catch word is our series where we teach you really interesting and useful English vocabulary, especially slang, idioms, phrasal verbs, this kind of vocabulary. And today, actually, our episode is answering a question that we got in our email inbox from one of our listeners named Pedroza. Pedroza, thank you for your question, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so that's probably wrong. But your question is a good one and I'm thankful that you sent it to us. So Pedroza asked how to use the expression at all in a natural way. And I thought, hmm, okay, this question will be easy to answer. <laughs> All is a short, simple expression, right? Uh, no. No. <laughs> when I thought about it a little bit more, I realized that at all is actually quite a complicated expression. But it's very, very common. I think I use it every day, probably. And so it's a really good expression to know. And this is what we will talk about in today's catchword episode. Before we get started, we want to remind you that you can download the study guide on our website, culips.com. And the study guide includes a transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real world examples, and a quiz. It is by far the best way to study with us. So remember guys, you can get that study guide on culips.com. Awesome. And because there's so much info in this episode, we really recommend that you do grab the study guide to accompany this episode. Okay, Morag, let's get right into it. And actually, this is going to be a two-part episode Ooh. because there <laughs> are so many different ways that we can use at all. I thought it would be best if we broke it down into the different ways we can use it. So today we will talk about how to use at all in negative statements and in questions. And in the next catchword episode, we're going to look at how you can use at all in conditional if sentences and also in positive sentences. So there's many different ways we can use at all and that's what will be the topic for our next two episodes. Today we're going to look at the most common way to use at all and this is in negative statements and in questions. So Morag, I guess a good place to start would be with the general definition of at all. If we're making a negative statement, what does at all mean? In a negative statement, at all means no. <laughs> or just just never, not not even a little bit, just none. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's just an intensifier. Actually, at all is a really great word to add to your English vocabulary to make it sound more polished, more advanced. 
instead of saying a really basic word like very or really, if you use at all, it gives you that little bit of nuance, really takes your English to the next level. So this is why I think it's important to know how to use it correctly. And at all just adds emphasis. It makes sentences and questions stronger, it makes them sound stronger. And like you said, in a negative sentence, at all can mean not even a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, Andrew, I'm pretty darn sure that the majority of the time that a native English speaker uses at all, it will be in a negative statement, uh, not at all being one of the more common phrasings of it. I think in my day-to-day -day life, the most frequent way I use at all is in the phrase, no problem at all. Hmm. Like somebody will thank me for something <laughs> and I'll say, oh, no problem at all. Like today, for example, today, one of my students asked to make an appointment with me to talk about an assignment. And he said, oh, thanks for agreeing to meet with me. And I replied, hey, it's no problem at all. It's my job. Like, don't even think to thank me about it. It's, it's absolutely no problem. Not even a little bit of a problem. You know what's funny? I, I think uh, my most used phrasing for at all would be not at all. <laughs> when mm. someone <laughs> says, hey, is, is, is this an issue? Is this a problem? Not at all. Go ahead. So we both use negative statements that have positive connotations <laughs> for this. <laughs> it's, it's funny, actually. I didn't realize that. But yeah, when we say negative statement, it just means that there's negation in the sentence. It mm -hmm. doesn't actually mean that the meaning is negative, but grammatically there is a negative aspect to the sentence yes this is another or a couple of other fun examples of um, english speakers saying yes when they mean no and no when they mean yes <laughs> right which we've talked about in the past mm -hmm. go search through some of the old episodes for that one i'm sure it'll come up again <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Morag. Well, I think we can hop into some examples using at all with negative statements. And you guys can listen to the examples and get a better idea for how we can use at all to mean not even a little bit. Okay, let's listen to the first example. I'm getting a little peckish. Do you want to grab some lunch soon? I'm actually not hungry at all. I had a big breakfast this morning, but I would be down to grab a coffee later this afternoon. Okay, sure. Sounds good. In this example, two co-workers are talking about lunch. One of the workers says she's not at all hungry. So... In this sentence, when she uses at all, it's in a negative sentence, right? Not hungry. So at all just adds emphasis. She's saying that she's not even a little bit or not even slightly hungry. Okay, so she's really not hungry. And just to recap, let's listen to her describe her hunger here again a couple of more times. I'm actually not hungry at all. I'm actually not hungry at all. Okay. Morag, I think we can listen to a second example now. All right. Don't forget, we have tickets to see Guns N' Roses this weekend. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, shoot. Uh, I guess I'll have to cancel my plans with the guys. Wait, hold up. Are you actually complaining about going to see Guns N' Roses? Ah, uh, no, nah, not at all. It's going to be great, right? 
In this example, a woman accuses her boyfriend of complaining about having to go to a Guns N' Roses concert, which should be a fun thing, right? Mm -hmm. The boyfriend defends himself by saying that he's not complaining at all. He's not complaining in the slightest or in any way. Actually, he's excited for the concert. Let's listen to him mention how he's not complaining a couple more times. Ah, no, nah, not at all. It's going to be great, right? Ah, no, nah, not at all. It's going to be great, right? So here, at all is used to add emphasis to the fact that he is not complaining. Not in any way. Not at all. He is stoked to go see Guns and Roses. So stoked. <laughs> Actually, I would be stoked too. <laughs> Okay, so we looked at how to use at all in negative statements, and we learned that at all in a negative statement means not even a little bit or not in any way. And when we use at all to ask a question, we can think of it as meaning even a little bit, okay? Even a little bit. Do you have a minuscule amount? Yes. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Morag, so let's compare two questions. Are you at all interested in going to the museum? And are you interested in going to the museum? They're slightly different. There's a little nuance. Mm -hmm, definitely. In your native English speaker opinion, what's the difference between the two questions? I would say that uh, are you interested in going to the museum is a more casual question. Mm -hmm. It's a lighter question. It's just, and you could have interest for any reason or in whatever degree. Just a general interest. Just a very general interest. You know, it's like, do you, are you interested in going? And the answer to that could be really anything. Um, I also feel like there's no particular time frame that I would expect someone to ask that question. It could be getting to know someone, seeing if they enjoy that sort of activity, or, you know, actually actively making plans. However, uh, the question are you at all interested in going to the museum, that is much more about assessing a smaller amount of interest. You know, like you sort of already potentially know that someone is not incredibly interested. And now you're like, do you have any? <laughs> like, it's more of a please come with me. You're trying to assess if the person you're asking the question to has even a little bit of interest going to the museum. If you ask this question, I feel it's like because you want to go to the museum or you think it would be a good idea to take this person to the museum. And doing this is just a way to gauge the other person's interest in doing this activity that you think is a good idea. True, Andrew. I think the other aspect is this is not a conversation opener. Totally, totally. You would have already talked about the general concept of either going places or a museum before asking this question. It's not, a, um, it's not something to start out a topic with. Absolutely. Like maybe you had talked about going to the museum before and then you remember like, oh, hey, Morag and I talked about the museum last week. I'll see, you know, if she has any interest in going uh, this mm -hmm. week. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, guys. So to recap, are you interested in going to the museum? It's kind of a general question. You're just asking if somebody has a general interest in doing this activity, visiting the museum. On the other hand, are you at all interested in going to the museum? 
you're wondering if that person has just a tiny bit, if they're even a little bit interested. Okay, so there's a slight nuance to the meaning and the tone of the two questions. Morag, I think that we should get to some examples. And yeah, let's do that right now. All right. Are you at all thinking about going to Jeff's party this weekend? I thought about it, but you know what? I don't think I'm going to go. What about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to go. I haven't seen Jeff in forever, and it'll be fun. In this example, two friends are talking about a party that is hosted by Jeff. Now, one of the friends asks the other friend if he is at all all thinking about going to the party. Let's hear her ask that question a couple more times. Are you at all thinking about going to Jeff's party this weekend? Are you at all thinking about going to Jeff's party this weekend? Okay, so when we use at all in a question, it means even a little bit. So pretty much she wants to know if her friend has any interest in going to the party, even a little bit of interest. She's curious if he's even in the slightest degree interested in going to the party. Whew. Okay. <laughs> All right, Morag, let's listen to the final example with at all used to ask a question. Let's go. Oh, man, I'm screwed. Screwed? Why? I'm supposed to leave for my trip to China tomorrow, and I just realized that I don't have a visa. Are you serious? You didn't consider the fact that you'd need a visa at all before you left on the trip? No, I totally spaced. It didn't cross my mind all. So in this example, a woman complains about her trip to China, uh, that it's ruined because she forgot to get a travel visa. When her friend hears this, he kind of makes fun of her by asking if she even considered the fact that she would need a visa. It's pretty, pretty necessary item. <laughs> I'd say. So yeah. <laughs> Let's listen to the friend ask that question a couple more times. You didn't consider the fact that you'd need a visa at all before you left on the trip? You didn't consider the fact that you'd need a visa at all before you left on the trip? So here, the friend asks if she even slightly considered the fact that she would need a visa to travel to China. So when we use at all in a question like this, it means even a little bit or even slightly. So the friend just wants to know if she had thought about it at all, which she had not. <laughs> yeah, she didn't think about the visa and that's a problem. She's not going to get into China without a visa. Hmm. Okay, Morag, that brings us to the end of today's show. Just to recap, we looked at how to use at all when making a negative statement or asking a question. And when we use at all in a negative statement, at all means not even a little bit. And when we use at all to ask a question, at all means even a little bit, okay? And like I mentioned at the top of the show, in the next catchword episode, we will be looking at this expression at all again. However, this time in conditional sentences and in positive statements. So 
you're gonna wanna check in and listen to that episode when it's released. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for episodes just like this one, you can send us a message a few different ways. You can drop us a line via our Facebook page, facebook.com slash podcast, or you can email us directly at contact at culips.com. We'll be back soon, guys, so stay tuned. Bye. Bye. Do you like listening to Culips? If so, please show your support by leaving Culips a five star rating and a review on iTunes or Stitcher. This helps new listeners find the show. So don't delay. Rate and review today.